and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With me this week, I have Tom. Woo! Yeah, Tom. And only Tom. Yep. So, um, the other half of the cast, um... The board has decided to terminate their employment. We will be hiring, um, two other people who are better at line dancing and graph making. Yes, we felt that their line dancing and graph making skills were a little under par for a 72 PC. We like our line dances, so... And we need axes on every, every section of the graph, no matter what it is. Including the Urk is right value of stream when Urk is right. Yeah, yeah. Graph. Which was a terrible graph, by the way. Beautiful. But no, um, for real though, um, Josh and Adam and um, RS Gamer are currently doing um the rlcs qualifying they're currently fucking winning is what they're doing so um they have done i th- believe fairly well today i caught their very last match they got knocked to the uh, lower bracket but their next match was 20 minutes ago so they weren't going to be able to make the stream but hopefully they're uh representing 72 pc well well 32, 32. pc well yep um but yeah so we we should probably explain that so, so we wanted a Rocket League team that was, um, you know, fairly super competitive in nature. But, but Josh and Adam wanted something that was, you know, more fun and less super competitive in nature. So we have 72 Pin Connector, which is the hardcore play to win. Um, I assume they're like Dota professionals where they just hate everyone and themselves all the time. Nah. Uh, and then, then the 32 Pin Connector are, you know, they, they try to have fun with the game. So, 32PC is in the house and representing. Yes, and also the uh, actual 72PC team will be playing as well. Um, they have uh, Double Diego, which is actually one guy on the team that I have not met. But then you have BP, uh, Van R, and I believe Flux is also there. So, um, we have, um, you know, blessed to have two different teams fighting, representing us awesome dudes and um hopefully the 32 pc round today went pretty well we'll have to see oh yep they just won their match right before all right fucking a sweet okay but uh we'll keep everyone posted with that as that comes uh that news given to us by rs gamer in the chat thank you brother thank you rs for for keeping us up to date about our own crew which we have no idea what they're doing it's okay rs is there RS is a god. We've, we've got boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. The ground is covered. Going live to our senior correspondent, RS Gamer at RLCS. RL, how are things going out there? RS. R- RS, how are things going out there? And RL. CS. Also, is it bad if your correspondent is actually part of the team? I think there might be a little bit of bias at play. Just just a little bit. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I'm like, there, there might be some conflicting interests there. But yeah, so um, that's that's where those two are. Um, they're doing really well today. Hopefully, they uh, qualify for uh, was it next week? I think the next rounds of it will be, or actually a couple of weeks. I think because next week's still the opening qualifiers. Yep. But yeah, so we'll get back with them next week and be back at full power. So I know why you all tuned in. I know what you want to talk about. What is this weird bright red drink I've got right here? Uh, it's actually, it's a, uh, play on the same thing that I made a couple weeks ago. Uh, it is a double-fruited, um, old-fashioned, made with good whiskey, and I actually added, uh, a bit more cherry juice in it than I usually do. That's why it's bright and red. Um, but you decided not to have a whiskey drink that tastes like only whiskey and a slight amount of anything else. You have a drink that's probably more palatable to the general populace. I like my whiskey sours. So, so how do you make a whiskey sour? Sour plus whiskey and ice? Ice, sour, whiskey. And typically you do like a Sprite or something clear like Sierra Mist. But okay. I like a little bit of squirt. Okay. Because squirt is a fucking awesome soda. It is. I just, I guess it would work in a whiskey sour. Yes, it would. I'm going to have to try one of those. Because it's fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's orange. Fuck. Fuck. It's orange. We ruined the cast. We've got to start it over. Okay. Uh, we'll be back in five. Yep. Got it. But, um, yeah, so, Tom, I know you've had a busy week. You've been able to oh my God. do much? <laughs> uh, hardly. So, 
We had uh, a really cool thing that we recorded. We've got to cut up. We've got to edit it. Oh, God. Ah, right. We, we had fans. We had fans. It's, it's the fart that that one. Yeah, there we go. Shut up. All right. It's live podcasting, everyone. Um, so now that you've noticed that our audio quality is substantially better than it was, um, for the past couple minutes, um, we did something cool, uh, with Dota, of all things. So, Adam and Josh don't play Dota. Um, so what we did is I, I sent them the newcomer stream on TI, which the game they were watching, it was terrible for a newcomer stream. It was really just hype casting, um... It, it didn't explain how that game worked, which is, it's really sad, because, you know, I, I showed this to Josh, I'm like, hey, look, it's a newcomer stream, they'll tell you what's going on, and everyone's just like, oh my god, this guy totally dunked on the other guy, and now he's dead. It was a shitty stream for explaining how Dota works. Uh, so we figured we'd do our own little thing, so we recorded this, we're gonna cut it up, it'll be on our YouTube channel, hopefully here soon, um, with Adam and Josh, uh, asking questions and watching the game and saying, hey, what is this bird thing? Also, how did you kill him? Also, why is Urk so angry? Um, which was great. Uh, spoiler alert, I, I did win, so. Yeah, because I misused a fucking fountain. Y he did. He, he did. But, yeah, so we're hoping to get that finished and actually put up tomorrow. We understand TI will be done probably within a few minutes because... I fucking hope so. No, okay, all right, hold on. We've, we've got to shout this out real quick. Uh, if you are going to watch the international VODs out there, if you haven't seen it, if you want to avoid spoilers on TI, um, you should probably ignore us for the next five-ish five minutes. minutes. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time to mute, because I know some of you might be watching on a TV or something. You know, just waiting around here, avoiding some spoilers. And at this point, out. fuck you. Um, so Team Liquid is dominating right now. Oh my god, they're fucking wrecking everything in their path. So I watched these guys earlier in the week when they got knocked down to the loser's bracket. Very early in the week. And they looked bad. I think it was Team Secret that put them down. I mean, they just got stomped. So I, in my head, wrote them off right away. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. And today on the Grand Finals, the very first match, they just just destroy destroy newbie and then in the second match newbie comes out strong is leading and kills the entire game and then liquid just like ah fuck you we're gonna push hard with our alchemist and destroy you i honestly thought that second game i mean they were they were literally up like eight or nine kills early yeah like within the first 10 minutes i'm like what the shit is going on why isn't liquid gging and Liquid just decided to say, fuck you, Fountain Time, and just wrecked. It was amazing. Uh, some, some of the best Dota I have seen in a very long time. That said, thanks to work stuff, I haven't gotten to watch as much Dota as I really wanted to, but the finals today are fantastic. I will say, everything I've, I haven't watched as much TI this year as I have normally, but for everyone who does appreciate some good Dota... <laughs> This is fun Dota to watch. This isn't the very long play. Granted, there was a 103-minute match like we had earlier, but these matches have been aggressive. Very aggressive. Kills early and often. So, I mean, if nothing else, the Grand Finals have been a blast to watch. They've been really fast. Um, one thing that Josh and Adam commented on was, wow, there's a whole lot of downtime in this game. Why are you just sitting there and killing the little guys? Why don't you try to kill someone? What what are you doing? What you're just sitting there. But but the finals in this TI have been fucking like on fast forward. There is hardly any downtime. There's hardly any idle farming. It's just going nuts all the time. If you're level three, you're hunting for a kill. Yeah, it's been nuts. So go ahead and tune into that. Um it's fantastic. I'm totally gonna catch up on on the VODs because I have to see that game one. I have to. Yeah, that's that's that game one was quite impressive. But yeah, so anyone who is interested in trying to pick up a little bit of Dota, it's a little long. Um, we kind of quibble a little bit and we might try to edit down some of it. Maybe not. We don't know yet, but it's going to be up there. We do a very novice 
explanation on what Dota is. So don't expect some deep strategy if you already know what shit is. Yeah, if if you're coming into this as a Dota expert or, or a person familiar with Dota, we probably get a lot of things wrong. Uh, so don't expect, you know, any any purge level analysis coming from us. Basically, it's, uh, will I knock down his tower because it was there? Why did you do that? I don't know. I guess I wanted to win. And explaining why you can't just walk up to the Ancient and start hitting. Yep. Stuff like that. Like, the most base of base level Dota play. So, yes. Uh, that will be up, hopefully, in the next 24 hours. Hoping. As well as I Hoping. do want to take this time to call out that next week we'll, we will be starting, well, starting two new series, but we will have three series running through the week every week. So what we're starting to try to do is get some series on stream for everyone to enjoy and watch of a little bit different flavors. So starting this Tuesday, every Tuesday until its objective is met, I will be streaming Kerbal with the title of Irk Side of the Moon, because the entire objective of this stream is I'm starting a brand new campaign from scratch with you guys. User input helps me decide how to make the rockets, how to do what research, all of that. And the end game is to land successfully on the moon. Not even get back. I don't care if a Kerbal no, fucking dies no, on the you, moon. You have to come back. And, and if something happens mid-flight and fucks you up and you have to try to correct it, you have to change the title to Apollo Urkteen. That's what's happening. Okay. This all will right. happen. But um, so yes, I'll be doing a Kerbal stream, um, user input, help me out, make some rockets. But that is what we'll be doing on Tuesday nights. It'll probably be roughly, I think it's going to be 10 o'clock Eastern time, 7 o'clock Western or Pacific time. Um, I think that's what it is. We will update our Twitch tomorrow with the time for sure on that one. Wednesdays. I'm looking forward to this one. This one will flux on time since we do have differences and everyone's going to be in on this one. Um, it could be earlier, 6 o'clock Eastern time. It could be 6 o'clock P- or Pacific time. But on Wednesdays, we are doing what we call Bargain Bin, where for at least one hour, one of us will stream a game in our Steam library that we have never played. So you will be getting to see a lot of shit that we have picked up on Steam sales and Humble Bundles that we have no clue what it is. Yep, I'm going to probably head over to Steam Calculator, take a look at the timings on my games and say, okay, stream, here's the list of shit that you could possibly pick from. And if there are people tuned in at that time, they can pick. If not, fuck you, I'm picking Dota. No. Damn it. Something you haven't played. Not something you play for 500 hours. I haven't played today. No. Damn it. Because I think all of us who are on Steam realize how often you pick up games just because they're cheap especially on steam sales 99 cents why not 60 cents for pixel junkie fuck yes i've never touched it i haven't touched half the games in my library <laughs> a lot of the games in my library are shit some half of like three four dollars done some of them like i have overlord i know it's a good game so at some point i might do it but i think it's going to be more interesting for us to dig into the really fucked up indie titles we're gonna try to get an hour to two hours per stream at least maybe maybe it'll become a regular thing if the game ends up being really good or really addictive yeah but we want to at least benchmark one hour minimum yep that way everyone on stream can get an idea of oh that's what this game is just watch the first game we're gonna pick for this is gonna be some clicker thing where we just watch fucking progress bars yeah at that point i think we're gonna lose followers yeah But that is going to be our Wednesday stream going forward, and that will be a collaboration between all four of us. So also, if you come to our libraries and see a game you want to see someone stream that we haven't played, just tell us on Twitter. And then on Thursdays... Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. I don't know if they have a time lockdown. Um, No. (laughs) For anything that doesn't have a time lockdown, we're going to try to give you a hard time at the beginning of the week. But on Thursday is Tom and Josh running Co-op Dark Souls 3. Every Thursday, you'll be able to catch that. Um, We are West Coast time, so it'll probably, I'm assuming, be around 6 to 7 Pacific time. So 
nine ten Eastern, just roughly that time for anyone wanting to watch that. We try to get um, two hours per run. Sometimes, depending on video feed quality issues, as you saw the last stream, hopefully not, but some people did. Um, you know, it could be later, it could be earlier. We're going to try to do a better job of uh, tightening up our stream and making it so we aren't streaming at six frames per hour. Yeah, we've, um, so we're new to, well, all these things we're trying to put up on YouTube as well. So anyone watching on YouTube can go and watch these and also we'll mash up better clips for YouTube. So you don't watch two hours to see one cool kill. Why not? Well, if you want to watch on stream and talk, yeah, it's fine. But on YouTube, I kind of want to get to the chase. So we will have a, uh, at the end of all of this, because we are going to make a big compilation video, we're going to have every single death. That'll be cool. Yeah. It's it's good so far. I've cut together day one. I need to still do day two. Lazy bastard. I know. Day two was three weeks ago? Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Four. We ha we haven't done a day three, so I'm not even behind yet. Yes, but... um, Oh, we just caught word that uh, Dobby said TI is over. So let's, let's we're not, not saying who won, but if you were listening five minutes ago, you know what that means. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Yes, and TI-89s are also over, as pointed out. Yep, TI, Texas Instruments, is now bankrupt as of this moment. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, but that's enough on the shameless plug for ourselves on what to expect through the week. So, Tuesday, Kerbal. Wednesday, random-ass stuff. And, uh, and by random-ass stuff, I mean stuff that could be complete garbage or awesome. And Thursday's Dark Souls co-op. Hope to see you guys jump in on it, but... Just wanted to let everyone know that's what's coming on. So, I have been playing a little bit more, and mostly on the bus. The Switch is the perfect commuter video game system I've ever used, especially if you're driving to work. What? Yeah. Think, I mean, about, think why, about what you just said. I, I did. So, I mean, there's nothing to prevent you from... Well, maybe the motion controls can get in the way when you're trying to change lanes or something, but I don't see why you wouldn't use the Switch driving to work. Uh, so if you drive to work, totally buy a Nintendo Switch. But if you have to ride a bus like I do, um, you can use the Nintendo Switch there and flail around and hit your fellow passengers. Uh, so I've been playing a little bit of Mario Kart that's uh, just awesome. Uh, Splatoon, just just a bit. Uh, and Breath of the Wild, which I keep finding things to do. Holy shit, that game is massive. So I really enjoyed that game, but I have found myself hard-pressed to be able to get back into it. I've had more enjoyment and ease of getting back into Horizon Zero Dawn than I have Breath of the Wild. Really? Yes, be because Breath of the Wild didn't... Granted, I, I can do some more side quests. That'll probably pull me in a little more. But Breath of the Wild didn't lay a really nice story out for the main line. That's true. Where Breath of the or where um Horizon Zero Dawn, its story is just so good. I think I've never played a game where I've intentionally cheated the game to get to the story faster. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know about that, because people say that a lot about um, The Last of Us. And The Last of Us wasn't a bad story, but like if that's the greatest story the PS3 has to offer, then why buy a PS3? It's not that it's the best story. Story. It's the emotional roller coaster of that story. It you start out completely unvested, and by the end of it, you're like, oh fuck. I uh, unless yes, you're yes, a heartless uh, asshole. Yes and no. I mean, the first five minutes of the game, which I don't want to spoil it in case someone hasn't played it or gone to YouTube to watch the first five minutes of The Last of Us. But I was emotionally invested since the the closing of that little opening sequence. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck, shit just got real. Eh. Like, like I was into it, and I played the game. It wasn't bad. It's not a bad story. I just didn't think it was great. It's not anything to write home about. It's pretty average for video game stories. I liked it. It the story itself, yes. If you used to just read the story in a book, it's par. But the it was the playing through that story and the things that were exposed to you. It is what did it. It wasn't the story itself. Where I think Horizon Zero Dawn the story itself and the way it unfolds there's so much mystery and intrigue and honestly it's i don't know of another story that is this hmm. the um post apocalypse or po post apocalyptic scenario i've never seen one put like this yeah i, I 
I'll have to totally play it over here at some point because I'm I'm not going to buy a PS4 for that game. I know it's supposed to be amazing, but you know I I can have one console in my house at a time. It's it's kind of the the self imposed rule I've got right now. Um, so with Zelda, the the story is definitely not at the forefront, right? It's the best Zelda story that's been told since probably Wind Waker. That said. It's kind of a shit story compared to anything else that has a good story, right? Yes. Right. So you compare it to something like Mass Effect, for instance. Um, yeah, there's it doesn't hold a candle to any anything that's remotely story driven. It's a great story for a Nintendo game, which isn't saying a whole lot. But the thing that Breath of the Wild has that none of the other games um, I've played in a long, long time have is I can bring up the map screen. I can say, whoa, that looks fucking weird. Or, hey, there's a mountain over here put down a marker and just fucking go, right? Just just get there. And that's all I got to do. And that's what keeps me entertained. Yeah. That's why I keep going back to it. The gameplay of the game is great. I mean, so honestly, what we're, so what we're talking right now is essentially the game of the year debate. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, it's I love Zelda. Zelda's a fantastic game. It's just, it it does do things that haven't been done in open world before and where some of the open world interactions with horizon is kind of skyrimish i think a they brought in the combat system was so i don't know how it's not unique but it's so well done it's very the, tuned where you disable enemies by attacking certain areas to make them permanently weaker and stuff like that and then you put on top of that really good fighting mechanic an amazing story yeah, I, I mean, I'll I'll totally have to play it because I've I haven't heard a bad thing about this game yet, uh, aside from one little thing. Someone tried to climb a mountain in the background and they ran into an invisible wall and they thought that was shitty. Oh well, shit! I did not on Zelda. Yeah, no, I have too. I, mean, I have too. It's, it's impossible unless you literally make a physical barrier someone can't get by. Right. It's impossible not to put up those walls. Right, and I, I totally get it. And I really wish Breath of the Wild wouldn't have had that "you can't go further" mechanic because that's that's fucking shitty. Right. In a game all about being an adventure game and, and boundless potential, I literally ran into an invisible wall and that pissed me off. So I don't I don't hold that against it when comparing it to Horizon Zero Dawn because they both do the same shit. Uh, Zelda is definitely, uh, I would say, a little bit more open than Horizon Zero Dawn. They try to do a little bit of funneling for the purposes of, of story and gameplay, whereas Breath of the Wild just drops you in the middle of a field and they say, I don't know, kill Ganon, I guess. But I mean, they do some funneling to a degree. Their funneling is we're going to make this story so entrenched that you're going to rush to it. Other than that, I mean, that right. map is huge right. and I still haven't explored the entire map and I beat the fucking game. I mean, I still have fog of war over parts of my map. That's impressive. Yeah. That's and, very impressive. Um, actually, this does have another call out I want to bring up is um they've announced the release of their uh, big story DLC which will be in December I think so I'm am definitely going to be brushing that off more a lot more that'll be nice but yes so I didn't want to make it sound like I was attacking Zelda because Zelda's great it's just I find it not as easy to jump back into as I thought it would I mean it's something I'll pick up like hey, I kind of want to play that I'll play it for about a half hour, and I'm like, I'm kind of done with this again. You've, you've got to have the mindset of, right, because Zelda, it's not like Mario Kart, where you go, oh, well, I haven't beaten this thing yet, and you go for it. Or Splatoon, where you say, hmm, I'm going to try to get to level 11 today. It's, I'm going to load up a game, and I'm going to forge my own path, and there is no one going to tell me what to do unless I'm specifically seeking out a quest. It, it takes a certain mindset to jump into it. And there have been days when I feel particularly lazy, and... I don't jump into Zelda because it, it does take a little bit of effort, just a minute amount of effort to say, hmm, I'm going to go over here, right? But, but we've, we've talked about Zelda a whole bunch on this show. Um, I played some Battlegrounds solo. First person, second person. First, first person. person. Yeah. Although now I want to see a second person game. You, you, you what, play, what would that be? You play the game from the view of your enemies. God, that'd be so hard. Right? I, I kind of want to make that game now. So, the 72-pin connector game jam is starting today, where you can only make second-person games. I don't think we can do that. Yeah, I know. But, but, but anyway, why not? Anyway, we won't get into why. But So, so PUBG... What do you think of first person? Uh, it totally changes the game. Totally changes the game. They're still alt-looking, so you can still run and hold alt and look around, uh, which I do appreciate. That said... um. 
it makes me play a whole lot more reckless because my view is constrained. I know everyone else's view is constrained. I still suck at the game. Um, but it's a lot of fun because I can run into places and it makes a lot more sense to sneak around in third person because maybe you'll catch a glimpse of something with the camera rotating it around. With first person, but if you see them, they see you. And that's almost a guarantee. The one thing I loved about the alt look with first person, you actually move your head. You don't get the look for free. You may not have known it because you were playing by yourself, but Adam and I were running some first person together. You can tell where the person's looking. Okay. So nice. you literally get no look for free, which I like. You have to have some form of body movement to be able to look. Yeah. So I really like it. I think it totally changes the way the game plays. I really hope they bring first person to squad because that's going to be a lot of fun. I think they just actually recently did. Oh, did they? Oh, that's great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to put in a little bit more time. I still suck at the game and I don't think the gunplay is as finely tuned as I want it to be. When, when I play a shooter, I want it. I, I know it's trying to be semi realistic, but I want it to feel like Unreal or Counter-Strike, where it just, it feels completely tightened. This, the gunplay feels a little bit loose. Actually, I think this gunplay's really, really solid. It's not fantastic, but it's solid. I think the biggest issue people have is you don't get a chance to get used to the gunplay. That's true. That's true. That's why the strategy of there for a while, I was doing it and I still want to get back to it, is we talked about it before, crazy runs. You just go aggressive. And for the sheer fact, if you get better at using the guns. The, the thing I'm finding is the gunplay feels lethargic and heavy. The guns don't have a real quick snap to them. Like in Counter-Strike, I can aim, I can fire, and it all feels very quick. And it feels like that gun is connected to my mouse. And this, it feels like there's almost, almost a lag to it. I don't know exactly how to explain it. Um, I kind of like that. I, I like the not hyper snappy, more realistic gun movement. Yeah, it, this is definitely more realistic. I'll give it that. I just don't think it makes for very good gameplay. I, I think I think it would be better. if It doesn't make for good gameplay. You say about the game who has what the second highest peak number in right. Steam. I, I think so. So let me let me put it a better way. Um, it could make for good gameplay. I don't think it makes for good gunplay. Right. If this were a uh, Counter Strike style, um, constrained map, you know, ten people to to a mount to to a round. Um, no one would play this game. Yes, but at the same time, you put Counter Strike where you're shooting three kilometers at a guy. Oh yeah, no one would. Well, actually, no one would, would, no would play that, that either. either, right? Um, because the op is the only weapon that would work at that range, right? So yeah, they they're two totally different games with totally different objectives. I just really wish the gunplay felt better. Because in first, in third person, it does. It didn't really matter so much because it felt good enough as a third person game. But from first person, I'm expecting a like a tighter control set, a tighter grip on the gun, and that just hasn't happened for a game that has both. They're not changing anything but the yeah. viewport. Yeah, I know, I know, and that's. I don't want to give them like a pass and say, yeah, no, I totally get it. I I get it, but. I wish it would change. And honestly, I don't think CS's gunplay is that great. Well, I mean, it's okay to be wrong. You're allowed to be wrong. No, I mean, like, honestly, I think Modern Warfare was better gunplay than CSGO. They're two totally different games. Modern Warfare was Unreal no, Tournament. No, 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 no. There, You can't say they're two different games while just comparing Counter-Strike to Battlegrounds. No, no, no. Okay, two different styles of shooters, right? Battlegrounds is going to fall into the more realistic segment of shooters like Counter-Strike. Call of Duty falls into the Unreal Tournament segment. Counter of Strike is nowhere near a realistic shooter. More realistic, right? You've got your CS players and you've got your Unreal Quake players. You've you've got two totally different things. There's arcade shooters and then there's anything except an arcade shooter. And then somewhere over there, you've got like the Clancy shooters, which nobody plays because they suck. You see, I, I I got some support from the chat where they're agreeing that CS gunplay is not that. And There's, I'm going to take that one person in the chat okay, pixel, all right. and say that is the entire chat agreeing with me. I'm, I'm going to need I'm going to need some graphs. I'm I'm always going to need some graphs. Soul, make us a graph. Anyway, um, so anyway, so uh, I played a little PUBG. It was good. I like the first person. Um, I shot a guy. I shot a guy. It was great. It was so much fun. Um, and then he had a shotgun, and that didn't end so well. Uh, and then then I landed, and there was another person. First person kung fu fucking sucks by the way. 
I tried to punch some dude out in first person, and he kept circling me, and I did not have a good day. So that's that's kind of when I stopped. Yeah, I. Yeah. Whenever I was playing it, I didn't want to stop. I've realized in first person, I don't know if it's just me, but it felt like they amplified the sounds so that the sounds were more yeah. intense. Like, I remember hearing an explosion near me, and I'm just like, holy shit. The guns sound meaner, the explosions sound louder. And I think it's a good thing. I think it really amps up. I mean, Battlegrounds is all about anxiety-driven game. Oh, the first person does that. And when you put it in first person, it does that it really well. It, it does that really well. I've yet to get the experience where you turn the corner and someone knew you were coming with a shotgun. But I know the first time I do that, I'm going to have to try to not piss my pants. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. I, I want to see um, more more first person. If they if they did link it to squads already, that's great. We're going to have to try that out. Um, this deserves to be one of the, you know, the game with one of the highest player counts on Steam. Um, I really enjoy it. And for being an early access game and for the developers, you know, putting in the time, you know, they are constantly releasing updates. They're constantly fixing shit. Uh, they're constantly managing the community. Uh, I really appreciate what they're doing. I, I don't I don't want to say, like, complain about the game and say it's a bad game. because It's not. It's a great game. I just I wish it were better like any other game. Right. It's so good. It just it just needs this little bit of polish. Little bit. But this game might lose some of its charm if it's too polished. Some yeah. of the quirks are part. They need vaulting. A hundred percent. I was in a match yes. the other day where we got stuck upstairs because people were uh, underneath us. Right. And if we could have just vaulted out windows, it we, we could have won. Yeah. Because, I mean, we were down to the final ten. But, you know, there, there are definitely improvements that need to be made. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, so you've been playing some stuff and, and I actually saw that you, you had some space stuff up on stream. Um, actually I didn't stream that. Oh, you didn't stream it. Oh no. no, no I saw, I, I saw the pre-roll. I yeah, saw, the, you pre saw the pre roll. But, um, first I do want to talk about, um, something that concluded, um, actually I think right before the cast started or during or right after, uh, the first ever Splatfest for Splatoon 2 has came to conclusion. The epic battle of Mayo versus Ketchup. So, the way the Splatfest works, this is my first time being a part of one. I mean, they've had them since Splatoon 2, or Splatoon 1. But, there's three segments that count. Popular vote, so what team was on what. The win percentage of uh, solo play, where you just get randomly matched up with teammates. And the win percentage of team play. Catch up one popular vote, something like 72 to 28. They dominated. No one was choosing catch up. However, they lost both of the matchups. Oh. Because here was the thing that sucks. You get no momentum as catch-up because since there was that much of a player base playing as them, you play one match against Mayo, then you play five matches against catch-up. Because so what they do is they try to match you against each other. But if you can't find a match, they just match you up against your own team, and then you just have a regular match. So what you're saying... Is Splatoon has an electoral college that fucked the vote for everyone and plunged Splatoon into a just hellish nightmare of political intrigue for the next two weeks. No, I'm just saying catch up lost. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, something else that was weird is when it was actually catch up versus mayo, you were the color of your condiment. Oh, nice. So nice. it was really off white everywhere and really <laughs> bl like really, really red. It looked like semen and blood all oh, over the Jesus. map. Jesus. Is actually what it looked Good like. Good shit. It Fucking is, Nintendo. It's a kid company. Yeah, and just, it was semen and blood wow. all over the map. God, Nintendo. But, but you know, they can put semen all over a map, but they can't let people talk to each other because save the children. Save the children, of course. But... <laughs> Sorry. So, so we, no, we've no. got we've totally got a graph built uh, built in chat right now. Let me let me explain this. Uh, the left, the vertical axis, is uh, level of Erk's autism, and the bottom axis is length of Counter Strike discussion. Uh, and it's a linear line going from zero uh, all the way to the top right of the graph. Um, this is a graph I can kind of get behind. I totally agree with this. You all fucking suck. <laughs> but um, so the Splatfest 
went off. Um, there's a lot of uproar online right now, though, because of the fact that since it was such an uneven team split that, up... That someone won the popular vote without actually winning the contest? Well, not that. It's that because you were that overwhelmingly unpopular, not all your matches counted. Yeah, that's true. Where Mayo, it was every match counted. Yep. So, but either way, um, I played a shit ton of that. I am I really like Splatoon. Uh, I got a few friends I play with. Um, I've only played a little bit with D-Lies, but D-Lies had a really high MMR during the Splatfest. Nice. Um, buddy James back in Ohio and uh, Vosbeck play with them. It's a good bit. But yeah, it's, it's a fun game. They need to work on the ability to play with friends a little more. But other than that, though, that said, I was, I've was i been jumping in with James almost every night. And it's just some matches you play together and you wreck. Other matches you play against each other. And then you literally are talking on Hangouts, trash talking each other because there's no way to do it in game. But... Yeah, it's good old Nintendo. Been playing a good bit of it. It's it's a really good game. Um, it's not a console seller, but at this point, I feel Zelda, Splatoon, and Mario Kart is enough to get it. And then there's enough small purchases on the eShop to make you be okay with having uh, a Splatoon, really a Switch. Quick we, graphing, uh, Tom. Shut the fuck up. We we also have another graph. Uh, thanks to Dark Soul Invader in the chat. Uh, thirty three point three percent of people are wrong. And 66.7% of people are right. Um, but, Dark Soul Invader, you made a pie graph, which is by far the worst of the graphs, so you're no. instantly disqualified. You'd be quiet. Pie graphs are fantastic. Pie graphs fucking you look suck. look at one circle, and you automatically know the no. ratios of everything. No, you it don't is have to look misleading. at different bars. It is misleading. It is shitty. There is no worse graph than the pie graph. What? Yeah. No. Other than maybe a stacked bar graph, because those suck too. No, bar graphs suck. No. A pie graph is one thing that represents everything. Next time on 72 Graph Connector. Flow charts. Fuck flow charts. God, I hate <laughs> flow charts. But um, anyway, so yes, I have been playing some Splatoon. Also did get a little bit of Rocket League. Um, not a whole lot new. As we said, um, RLCS, the 32 pin connector team was playing today. They were just eliminated actually as the stream was going on. But if I understood RS correctly, they will be able to go again in two weeks, I think. Is so that the case? Okay. They still stand a chance as well as the 72 PC team is still at large. So somebody kill them. We will get a team in, damn it. Matter so, time. Also, um, just feel free to jump on stream because I think they've been streaming matches. Uh, jump in, support, be friendly. They love it. And then I was doing a little bit of Splatoon or uh, Kerbal. So I was doing Kerbal so I can get a little pre-run video whenever I'm streaming. But also a little reminder of what exactly Kerbal is. Because after not playing Kerbal for two years, I kind of forgot some of the controls. And that game <laughs> is not the friendliest. No, it's not. It plays like an old school flight sim. Um, yes. And have you ever played any of the uh, career mode? No. No, I haven't. So I know you've done the sandbox mode. Yeah. Well, it, that's the issue with the early access games that I loved. I loved Kerbal. And I played the shit out of the sandbox mode. And I felt like, oh, Right, I've played the game, and then when they added all this other shit, I never got to see well, it, because I was done playing the game. You said you played the game, but that was because you didn't have the aspiration to say, I want to make it out to their equivalent of Pluto. Yeah, no, I, I totally didn't get hardcore into it. I will fully admit that. Because, see, to me, that was the thing. It's like, okay, I got to the moon, and now I'm going for Mars. I was able to get a ship in orbit around their Mars once in nice. Sandbox. That was it. But career mode, you start with so few or so little stuff, you have to just run experiments inside of the atmosphere to oh, be able to shit. unlock stuff to get into low orbit to run to get to outer orbit to eventually get out to moon orbit. Okay, so when you do the stream, are you starting from the base level of yes, nothing? Yes, I'm starting right. from nothing at all. Okay. You will watch me struggle for a few weeks, and then I'll get into Earth's orbit. <laughs> and then you'll see me struggle for a few more meet or weeks, and then I'll get into the orbit with the moon. Coincidentally, that's the same thing that's going to happen in the Dark Souls stream. We'll struggle for a few weeks and then beat a boss and then struggle for a few more weeks and maybe not die against a, an invading phantom. The great thing with mine is you get to see a lot of funny Kerbal faces because those Kerbal people are hilarious. The best thing about mine, we get to see Josh die over and over and over again. And it's kind of hilarious. Don't tell him I said that. Boo. <laughs> But anyway, we I think that's all the games we've got. I think I think that's all the games. Do we uh 
We got some news? We, we got some news. Um, we actually have a good bit of news. All right. Yeah. So, um, I want to start off with this because this is controversial and I don't know if you read this at all. There was a new study. I shouldn't say this is necessarily controversial because this is actually one of the first times where there's a video game study that isn't, Hey, video games make you violent. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see them studying something else other than, uh, if your child plays Dota 2, they will be a sociopath, which by the way, they will be. (laughs) Well, that's just because the. That's, that's just Dota 2, right? But so this study was um, based off of action games like COD and stuff, first person shooters and third person shooters, what they were considering. Um, they were saying that a prolonged exposure to these type of games playing religiously would cause a gray matter loss in the brain. And gray matter loss in brain is often linked to uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, and things like this. I've known plenty of gamers that have dementia. Really? I mean, just about everyone I play online with. Yeah. But no, you, <laughs> it, it's not like, oh my God, you get dementia now. It's just, yeah. that's something that is possible. It's, it's an interesting study. Um, of course, with all good studies, this will need to be replicated um, time and time again to, you know, uh, correlate the results, make sure it's not a one-off thing. The, the study... It looked like it was done okay. I'm not a scientist by trade. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. So take this with a, you know, a salt lick of salt. Um, But it doesn't look like this was rushed to market just to say, hey, video games turn your your children into killers. Um, So we'll we'll have to see uh, because it might be the case. Now, that said, um, this is specifically targeting action games, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just action. First person, second person. So, yeah. so yeah, it's it's chat distracting. Chat, it's kind of yeah. Going, yeah sorry, going we, we, nuts. we we have something right now in chat that caught me off guard. So I was trying to take care of it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but yes. So um, first person, third person shooters is what they're considering action games, not the traditional video game genre of action games. Right. It's not Space Invaders that they're looking at here. No, this is like Call of Duty, Battlefield, yep. Battlefront, that kind of stuff. Right. So that I thought was really interesting. Um, I'd like to see some more studies come out about that, but it's granted. I hate seeing the constant assault on what can we say wrong about video games, but I'm glad that they're actually taking more of a legitimate approach rather than video games make you violent. I, I completely agree. It's, it's good to see actual other studies and I'm sure the video games turn your children into demons stuff will eventually subside because let's be honest the generation who grew up playing these video games uh are us and we're kind of fucking getting old right we're gonna look at video games the same way uh you know our parents looked at rock and roll or or television right they're like no television doesn't turn your brain into mush just you know try to go outside i guess um we're, we're going to look at video games and look at it as another form of entertainment, right? And I'm sure we're going to have our demons too, right? We're going to be like pff, implantable Vive 4.0 chips directly onto the brainstem. No, that'll totally turn you into an evil killer. Um, I'll take that right away as long as I don't have to upgrade my graphics card that's in my stomach. Uh, yeah, like if I don't have to keep this battery pack replacing my kidneys, I'm totally on board. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that was just a quick one. I thought that was interesting though. Um, some more upsetting news, potentially, depending on where you stand. Uh, Shadow of War has, an, or the developers, Warner Brothers, well, they're the publisher, has announced that there is microtransactions in Shadow of War. Uh, what they're doing is they're doing loot boxes with random poles, and you could be getting XP boosting, orcs for your following, or items of varying rarity. So people are going to be spending their actual cash on random items that you can otherwise get in game now typically my stance on this is i don't care if you want to pay to have the game beat for you so you can say you beat it by all means do it you're a fucking pussy but go ahead and do it however the one thing that came out from one of the review sites of Eurogamer um is that that they felt the game was made artificially grindy which would potentially make you want to buy these things. And if that is true, 
that's when I'm going to say this is kind of fucked up. So this, this shit is very common. Like the, the grindy stuff is very common in free to play multiplayer games. And, and I get it, right? If you're going to make a free to play game, you need some way to get revenue and microtransactions do that. And how do you incentivize people to do it? Make, make your game fucking suck. Unless you buy this magical doodad or a pile of gold coins, right? I, I get it. Um, it's shitty for the, for the player, but I get it. Um, but single player games, especially ones you're selling for 60 bucks a pop, you know, AAA games, that's fucking shitty. I'm okay with it initially because they said that there is no walling. So you're not being gated away from items. All the items are in game. Right. right. But that, that creates such a, a thin line, right? That creates this big gray area of, uh, like, like, uh, I've, I've read, um, I have not actually played this game, so I can't speak to it personally, but I've read from people who play Rainbow Six Siege, you know, you can buy the microtransaction thing to unlock a bunch of stuff, or by playing the game for six to eight hours, which is extremely reasonable for a game like that, you can get all the stuff you would buy anyway. I think that's completely fine. That's perfectly fine. If you're impatient and you don't want to put six to eight hours in the game before you get whatever doodad guns you get in that game, totally fine. If it's like a 200 hour grind or you give us $5, that's, that's fucking milking it. But dude. there's two different things there. You're talking multiplayer versus first player. Oh, no, I totally, totally because get that. Here's what it comes totally down to. It. If it's a standard grind of a game and you're going to spend a hundred hours and that's the standard game and they come in and say, you know what? We're actually going to offer you loot boxes. You can get the shit randomly. So you don't know you're getting it. Yeah. Which is a whole nother can of worms that could be potential issues for people. Yep. But. I have no problem with them introducing that because you know why? It doesn't affect the way that I'm playing the game because I'm going to play the grindy way because that's the way the game was. Now, if they take a game that would be 100 hours and it's now 200 hours because they want to incentivize you to buy their yep. stuff, and that's what your game gamer is suggesting they're doing, then that's an issue. There's also um, the, the issue of how this works into the story, right? So if you're, if you're playing... <gasps> Shadow of War, which is, um, cor correct me if I'm wrong, but it's supposed to be uh, an immersive Lord of the Rings style experience where you're creating your own story by battling people and playing with the game systems. And it's it's supposed to immerse you in this world. And then you get this fucking like pop up saying, oh, look, you got a loot box. Pay a dollar to unlock it. That's going to take you right the fuck out of that game, out of that experience. And that would be really shitty. Now, if it's something like, um, you know. Hey, uh, we, we raided these caves, um, we killed a bunch of orcs, and back at the town, we've uncovered this, uh, this, uh, loot. Uh, but the shopkeeper is not gonna let you, you know, take the, the treasure chest unless you pay him some money. And then you sort of try to work it into the story so it's not too in your face. That's better, but I don't know how they're going to do this. Have you seen any way they're gonna try to work it into the mythos of the game? I haven't. Okay. But the thing that worries me is that it came from Eurogamer, and Eurogamer is very, very good at this stuff. Yeah. They are the ones who knocked everything out of the park on the Switch months before anything came out about the Switch. So, uh, this... And it, and it's, this isn't them speculating. This is them actually right. getting their hands on right. the game, because they are big-time media that gets the early access. Yeah. So this is actually the reason why I still haven't and probably won't buy the most recent Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution. So uh, Squaresoft, uh, amongst all the other stupid shit that Squaresoft has been doing recently, um, which, by the way, the Squaresoft's PC ports have been utter shit. Uh, so I, I have issues buying that uh, from them anyway. Um, but they have DLC inside of a single player game that lets you unlock upgrade points. Like, you can, you can just buy upgrade points to make your dude stronger. That is totally against the ethos of Deus Ex. Deus Ex is supposed to be an immersive simulation. You jump into the game and you take part in this world. It's like Thief or the original Deus Ex or so many other games where the world and the story and the gameplay just suck you in because if you want to go at this completely non-lethally, you can. If you want to fucking throw refrigerators at people and kill them, you can do that. That's a valid way to play the game. It's ridiculous, but you can play it that way. Uh, and that's always been Deus Ex. Uh, what's not Deus Ex is, hey, let's throw more money at the publisher and make my dude artificially stronger. That's 
fucking ridiculous. I'm not going to warrant that. I'm not going to reward that type of behavior with a purchase. I agree. I, I'm going to be a sucker because I really like the first one though. So we'll see. It's, it's not comforting hearing that come out of Eurogamer, but we'll see. I agree. Um, so there was a little bit of interesting news coming out of TI and not the TI news. Yeah. This, this won't be, um, too much of a spoiler unless you want to talk about, uh, bot competitions. So Elon Musk or Elon Musk, uh, you know, Tesla dude, he is backing a AI company called OpenAI. Well, he created an AI who played one of the most well known Dota players, Dendi, one on one. And it was supposed to, I don't know, be a best of five, maybe, or something like that. Mm. But this bot wrecked him twice to the point where he stepped away and said, I'm done. And everyone saying that this bot looked eerily like a human when it was playing, in that Dendi himself said it was a little bit like a human and a little bit like something else. And I just think it's really cool that we're getting to the point where AI can be programmed in such a way where, you know, as, as he said, Musk said, this isn't chess. This isn't go. This isn't traditional strategy games. This is very complex online multiplayer games that have systems and motion and so many things to monitor. And this AI was trained so well that it can take out one of the better players in the world easily. Yeah, this is, this is really interesting. I really, really hope that the framework they're building isn't a one-off because we've seen bots in multiplayer games just kind of go away. Uh, it's actually kind of a, kind of a rarity to have bots in your game now. And, and Dota has bots, but let's be real. They suck. They, they really suck. Yeah. Um, especially like I've, I've lost, uh, bot matches of Dota when trying to show people the game because my bots would not cooperate with me. You know, I, I'm pinging on fucking towers. I'm like, look, they're, they're here. They're wrecking us, please. And they're off in the woods, like doing something. I don't even know. Hunting butterflies. Um, but I would, butterfly hunters. <laughs> I would, I would love for open AI to put out like a generalized framework, even for game companies to pay for it and say, Hey, look, plug this into Unity, plug this into UDK or, or Unreal. Uh, plug this into whatever engine you're using, and it's a general bot. Have people play matches for, you know, 100 hours, 200 hours, and this bot will pick up what the players are doing. And um, with machine learning, that becomes a whole lot more realistic. Um, back in uh, the original Quake days, and there's, I forget who did the YouTube video. Someone did a great YouTube video on the history of bots in gaming. Uh, one of the original Quake bots would learn to play the game by watching the player. The server would actually watch player movements, watch how they move through the map, um, and they would emulate that player through the map and basically aimbot them if they came too close. It was really cool, but it was fairly limited because if the player didn't move in a particular way, uh, they wouldn't use that strategy. With machine learning, you could potentially move outside those bounds. Well, because the beautiful thing about machine learning, I've been... <gasps> fortunate enough to be exposed to a good bit of it in the industry is you take learning sets and you take people who have won matches and they will take all the data from that entire match and the computer will get fed all this data of this is what this game did this guy did when he won this guy did when he won this guy would did when he won and it's able to take in all this data and then form formulas off of it so i would i would love it if open ai would put out a framework and say hey look uh developers when you put out your play test, uh, save all that replay data and put it into a learning set and just have your bot analyze this for a couple months. And that's your fucking bot profile. Done. And then you can even make the bots evolve, right? You can have it watch every multiplayer map, right? Or every multiplayer match and ship it off into the learning uh, you know, subsystem. And the bot is continuously ingesting more and more data about your game until you've got a really, really great bot. And at that point, you can kind of dial it down because it's really easy to make an overpowered bot who's not much fun to play against. And someone who makes mistakes, but not in a dumb way, more of in a human way. Yeah. Not the, oh, I didn't buy any items. Yeah. Like, I think, well, I, if, I don't know, if you're playing low-level Dota with a bot, it could emulate a first-person playing Dota, and they're like, boots, what are those? Because I did that my first game of Dota. That's why people hate me. One of the reasons people hate me. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm really excited. We'll have to see where this goes. It's, it's going to be cool. And um, with that, there is 
a little bit more news that we'll touch on for Valve. Uh, Dota 2, uh, Dueling Fates update. They're going to be introducing two new heroes into the mix. Yes. Uh, one looks to, well, if they actually do backstories, one seems like a sarcastic player and the other ones, I don't know, like a fairy kind of person. Yeah, it's a fairy demon thing. I don't know. It's Dota. I'm excited. New but heroes. Nothing much known, but two new heroes. I think it's going to take it up to 115 characters. Uh, something around there. It's nuts. And by the way, uh, props to, to Valve, because when you install Dota, you can play every hero. You don't have to fucking buy heroes like League. Yeah. I know it doesn't take much to buy the heroes or unlock them all, but it's kind of nice that you get the full subset right out of the gate. Well, that's because Valve makes mad money in its market. Uh, yeah, they do. By the way, this, like, what is it, $27 million prize pool for TI... Uh, Valve gets 75% of that. They, they did put a, forward a big chunk of money on their own, right? I think $5 million is what they started Keep out with. Keep in mind, but that means $100 million, uh, roughly. I mean, granted, I, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere right. around $100 million was spent on compendium-based items and stuff. Yes. That's yeah. insane. Um, and also, one more tad bit, or tidbit on Valve, well, on Valve, the game company. Um, they will be releasing a new game. <gasps> A new game from Valve? Does it does it end in a three? They don't know how to count that high. Oh shit! Somebody get some preschool teachers over there. Stat. So um yeah, they do need preschool teachers. Uh, they'll never do any threes. Maybe Left for Dead, and that'd be about it. But yeah, that'll be it. They did announce a new trading card game based off of Dota characters. In other words, Hearthstone. Your days are numbered. Watch your fucking back, Blizzard. Now, this is Valve, and they can do things wonky, and I can see them not allowing this game to be mobile, which would make Hearthstone still viable. Yeah, one of the biggest, most awesome things about Hearthstone, and that said, I've probably put five hours into the game. I am nowhere near like a, a regular Hearthstone player, is being able to pull it up on my phone and then dick around with the game for five minutes, ten minutes at a time. because. It, the matches don't take that long. I could just sit somewhere and play a match and be done. If I have to do this on the computer, eh. I'm, uh, I'm probably going to download this, right? I'm probably not going to play it a whole lot, though. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Vospec, um, is a tablet guy. He li well, I shouldn't say it that way, but he plays um, uh, that, uh, Hearthstone. So I always get on because I don't like tablets. And I'm like, well, what's the point? He's like, well, it's nice for this kind of stuff. And honestly, for that, I can understand. I can really understand. But, yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, sorry about that, people, but I think possibly a little bit of technical stuff going on. Um, that, was, that was some weird clicking happening. But, anyway. So, we had the Hearthstone coming out. Um, well, sorry. Uh, what is it called? Artifact. Yes, it's going to Artifact. Be the Valve new game. Um, and that was it for Valve. That was their big two announcements during TI. Um, other game news is No Man's Sky. Game launched last year. Shitstorm ensued. Yep. I enjoyed the game. Um, it's an exploration game. It nowhere near the promises. My, nowhere near the promises. My favorite thing to come out of No Man's Sky was, um, Somebody gave his girlfriend the tempered expectations box to hold while watching E3 trailers live on Twitch, and she was holding, like, the collector's edition of No Man's Sky. It was fucking hilarious. Because it just shows, you know, so many promises, so many promises, but until it hits that fucking disc or that fucking download, it doesn't exist. Well, I, I was one of the lucky ones, I guess, that went into it saying it's impossible for them to do everything they're saying. So right. I came in thinking this isn't going to be what they said. Yep. I found the game enjoyable. It was a nice, relaxing, soothing game. I think I still maintain that the biggest problem with No Man's Sky is the price point, because I have played less impressive games and been far more happy with them at five bucks. I'm not saying it should have been five bucks, but if they sold No Man's Sky as a $15 game, people wouldn't have been pissed. But because it was billed as a $60 triple-A blockbuster of this amazing game that will blow your socks off, it's just like the original release of Fable, which I'm still mad at Molyneux for putting out. Because it was, it was the RPG where you can, you can slash a tree, and then 20 years game time later, you'll see that the tree has like grown over that slash and, and stuff. It, 
He made so many goddamn promises in that press release, and almost none of them came to the game. It was promised to essentially be an Elder Scrolls game. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. The original Fable was great. It was a <sighs> great game. It just was nothing like it was sold. Back in the day, I had a Gamefly subscription, which is... If okay, for the younger people in the audience, Netflix didn't do online movies. Instead, you would have a Netflix subscription and you would get two or three or five DVDs out at a time. DVDs, physical discs, and they would come in the mail and you'd watch them and you'd ship them back for free. That's how Netflix got their start. But there was a game company, well, not a game company, but a company kind of like Netflix that dealt with video games. So I could rent DS games or Xbox games, and I rented Fable and I had it for a week and that was it. I sent that shit back. See, I enjoyed it, and I played the second, and I played the third. I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't beat the third, but I enjoyed them. They weren't what they were promised, but they were enjoyable games. But anyway, No Man's Sky, back to the point. Um, monster update, 30 more hours of actual story, were the Atlas plot line, which was this plot line that just ended. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Um, like everyone speculated, well, maybe you have to do it this many times, this many times, this many times, and no one ever found anything. There is now 30 new or 30 more hours to actual story play or story gameplay. So there's supposed to be an actual story to it now, as well as an addition of a limited co op. So, so Hello Games put that out, right? That's that's yes. the developer. Okay. I maintain that Hello Games is fine. I don't put any of this blame. Okay. I put a small amount of blame on them for making big promises that they later couldn't keep. But I think the majority of the blame rests with the publisher on this one. Sony? The majority of the blame rests with Sony. They, they, I mean, No Man's Sky had been delayed and delayed and delayed, and they're like, well, just fucking ship it. And that's... And Miyamoto loves to say a delayed game is eventually good, which sometimes it is. Uh, but, you know, when a, a bad game is bad forever. And... I feel like No Man's Sky really fell afoul of that rule. If they could have delayed it for two more years, it would have pissed people off. I get it. It, it, would, have, it would have required Sony to pony up a bunch more cash for something that they don't know is going to work. But I think we would have gotten a better game out of it. But that game's still happening. It's called Star Citizen. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't even get me started on, the, on, on Star Citizen. I am, I'm still waiting for them to put out something but there is another interesting tidbit of news that i didn't throw on here that i do want to bring up so it's gonna be interesting for you um the there's a game being produced by the original one of the original devs for final fantasy tactics it was this new deep tactical rpg he put a kickstarter out got eight hundred thousand dollars for it it was supposed to be released two years ago two or three years ago never did we still working on it, still working on it. And all of a sudden, the Kickstarter went dead silent. Huh. And then in the last few months, there was a post that, yeah, we kind of sold the game. What? So this game was just sold to a company who was well known for a Barbie title and an Adventure Time title. So brand new company just got sold. So $800,000 of Kickstarter. Poof. So it can happen sometimes like that. The one redeeming fact is the new company said, while people are wanting refunds, we cannot do refunds, we will honor the actual Kickstarters. Okay, so so let's let's just put this out there about Kickstarter. When you buy something on Kickstarter, you're not actually buying anything. You're not actually pre-ordering anything. When you give money to a Kickstarter, you're saying, yes, I believe in your idea. You are literally burning money. And sometimes that pays off, right? I burned money at the stake for Double Fine to put out a brand new adventure game. And the first half of that game was great. And the second half of that game was shit. But that's okay. I got a new Double Fine game and I'm okay with burning the amount of money I did. But don't even for a second think that when you buy something on Kickstarter, you are guaranteed anything. You are literally investing in a concept, in an idea that may or may not have merit. You could get nothing back for it. There is nothing in the Kickstarter terms of service that says, hey, you need to refund people. Well, there's the Peseta salad guy. I mean, you can, right. you're literally giving someone money is all that's happening. Yeah, you're just handing them cash. There is, there's no legal contract that says that you are owed a goddamn dime back if they, if they fuck everything up. You know what it is? It's digital begging with a twist. 
Yeah, that's that's it. That's what Kickstarter is. And I'm, I'm not going to lambast Kickstarter because they've brought some fucking great games out, right? Wasteland 2 was a thing that would have never happened had there not been a Kickstarter, right? There are tons of big games that were funded through Kickstarters that I've I've donated money to. Uh, and I've I've gotten my money's worth out of. I think uh, wasn't uh no planetary. Yeah, okay. So that came out. Um Kickstarter has made some great products before. But don't expect to get your money's worth out of it because chances are, and this is statistically accurate, chances are you're not going to get anything out of it. Yeah, and everyone who backed that new tactical game should just be happy that the new dev is saying, yeah, we're still going to honor. Yeah, yeah, that's... You should be fucking pleased you're getting anything. However, you want to know the fucked up thing is? Huh. They're starting from scratch. There was nothing there they felt they could sal- salvage. They oh. like the direction and are going to try to keep the spirit, but they're starting from scratch and are unwilling to put a timetable because they don't want to restrict themselves. You know, on, on one hand, and I, I hate to compare it to this because this is a juggernaut I'm comparing this to. Um, I wanted did the same thing with Earthbound. He came in and said, holy shit, guys. Uh, listen, you can salvage this and put out a game in six months that's going to be shit. Or we can rewrite it from scratch and put out a good game in a year. And guess what they did? They fucking scrapped everything and built it from the ground up. And Earthbound is one of the most critically acclaimed titles on the Super Nintendo. It can happen. It can have a happy ending. It can. I don't know if this one will. And that's it. I'm comparing, you know, fucking Held Laboratory and Nintendo to of the, the biggest game companies that put out some of the greatest games of all time to a relatively unknown developer who had a Kickstarter, but miracles do happen. Well, let's talk about another new game rather than one that's probably never going to come out. If it does, it's going to be underappreciated. Yep. So Splunky, great game. The dev kind of went silent for a while. No one knew what was happening. And then all of a sudden he started tweeting out some stuff with hashtag UFO 50. And then some other indie devs started tweeting out stuff with hashtag UFO50. Oh shit. And all of a sudden we realize UFO50 is a new game. So I did not pick up on a release date or not, but a UFO50 is going to be a collection of 50 different 8-bit games. These are not going to be full-size Super Mario 8-bit games, but they're going to be of decent substantial size in 50 of them. Some of them with limited multiplayer. And they're all different. Like, there, I was looking through this. Some of these were like Bubble Bobble. Then you have some that are like uh, Brawlers. Then you have 1942-style uh, shooters. And you have platformers. I mean, it's all over the place. Yeah, you've got some strategy games mixed in there. You've got some racing games. It's a big collection of random shit from the trailer. This looks awesome. They're putting some meta gameplay around all of it to collectively put all 50 of these games into one cohesive thing. What makes me most excited about this is it's not like random Joe Schmo. I'm going to make a video game today. Kind of, kind of unknown indie developers. These are, these are people that are proven in the industry at making really great games. I I am so excited about this. I'm going to wait, wait for the reviews. I'm not going to pre order this, but I am looking forward to it. I'm excited. I'll probably pick it up when it comes out. But the interesting thing is they stress that they're trying to take some of the classic genres and styles. And try to infuse some newer style things into it. Because Which worked great for something like Shovel Knight. Yes. I haven't played it, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. And it's, it's just there's been a lot of advancements on what video games can do that don't require technological advancements on what 8 bit was. It just takes a new style to be put into it. Yeah. So with you know, with something like Shovel Knight, get rid of the the lives, put in some Dark Souls, you lose shit when you die, you gotta go grab it and uh, you you infuse a bunch of other like cool genres in there, and you say, "Oh, hey, three saves? No, why not ten? Why not why not make these things massive and big, and not go fully eight bit when we can get away with it?" And it worked out fantastic. So UFO fifty, looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be interesting. Um, and then some other little small news: we have the Steam has now been gaining a hundred and fifty new or hundred. Oh my God, Eric, numbers. 1.5 million new users per month. PC gaming is dying, basically, is what this means. Yeah, it's past PlayStation and Xbox at this point. Combined. So, I 
think it's also aided by the fact that while not every Xbox player has a PlayStation, not every PlayStation person has an Xbox, almost every one of PlayStation or Xbox people do have a computer. Right. I think that right. does help because while consoles are strictly for one thing, computers are typically purchased for something. Yes, Thomas, my door. Okay. Computers <laughs> are typically purchased for something and then you can put Steam on top of it. Right, right. The, the, you know, you're not going to do taxes or, or web browsing on your PlayStation. I mean, you can do web browsing on your PlayStation. It just kind of sucks. Dude, just imagine someone doing their taxes on their PlayStation, like going With, through no, TurboTax no, no. through the web. No, I want, I want fucking TurboTax for the Kinect. That's what I want. I oh want to God. yell out my tax information and have the Kinect fucking fill that shit out. I want to dance, like dance the shape of your state for your state tax. Just. And you have to sing out, I had $40 of deductions. $40 of deductions. Yeah, that would be perfect. It'd be wonderful. I want to see that happen. I'm totally buying it. But I thought that was a really fun stat of, holy shit, Steam is adding a ton of people. And that's why Valve, outside of Artifact, hasn't been making new games. Yeah, this will this will be good. Um, also, on the Steam platform, this, I think, is an issue. So we hit on about a month or two ago that there is no more... Um, or, or green light. Green light's gone. Dead. But in place, it said, hey, pay $100, get into the system. Well, such a low barrier to entry. In the last seven weeks, they have had a thousand games put onto the platform. I don't, I don't see this as a terrible thing because it costs a hundred bucks to get on Steam. Um, and, more importantly, to get on the front page of Steam and to, to make that to like the, the top sellers list, right? You've got to do your legwork as an indie dev. Uh, you've got to put forward the, hey, we made this game. Please buy it. It's awesome. You've got to do your marketing properly and actually make sales to make the tops of the charts. Indies can't afford marketing sometimes. No, no. Mar marketing in, in indie realms is like, hey... Uh, you know, Total Biscuit, here's my fucking game, here's a Steam code, please fucking play it and talk about it on YouTube. Or, or, you know, hey, Super Bunny Hop, I made this game, can you please, you know, check it out and give it a review? You know, yeah, like, now, here's like doing the grassroots handout. Now, here's what you're missing with this, though. Yeah, that was possible back when there was a hundred new games a month coming on Steam. Now you have a thousand, you're gonna have a hundred developers doing that a month. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. I think this is going to bury good games to where we don't see them until three years later. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, I think what this will do, uh, is give the people who couldn't make a marketing push the ability to sell their games. Um, and I mean, this is just begging for, there was a, a web project for, uh, there's a website that you can go to. <clears throat> if you have a Spotify subscription to find songs that have zero plays, so you can listen to something that literally no one else has ever listened to on Spotify before. I want that for Steam. Hey, no one has bought this game ever. Yeah, that will be something I can see them adding is games with fewest <sighs> purchases. Yeah, I, I would love to take a look at that. I mean, Granted, the vast majority of that is going to be utter shit, right? It's going to be someone saying, I guess this is a video game. I don't know. Uh, but we could get some cool stuff in there. I don't think this is bad. Um, I don't think it's going to have nearly the amount of uh, bad you know, repercussions or negative repercussions that we think it will. Uh, I think this is going to help some indie devs get their foot in the door. It's helping them get in the door. But getting in the door doesn't do anything for you if people can't find you. Yeah, I agree. And that's that's why you can't name your, your hot indie game that's actually pretty good at something like Darkwood. Because the podcaster who, who you know listened to it and was really excited about this game is like, wow, that sounds really cool. Forgot about it in the span of one week. That name is Tom. Or, or you know, super rocket powered flying battle cars. Super aerial acrobatic rocket cars. Yeah, that one. I think that's right. I'm going to get like call outs in chat here in a second. But enough of that. We, we understand that's what it is. Some people will see it as good. Some will see it as bad. We'll see what it is. But there is one more um, tidbit of news I definitely want to get to. Nintendo is currently being sued. Surprise, surprise. 
And for a change, this isn't from a company who bought a patent thinking they would have a chance. Yeah, this this got this is getting legit. So there was a company, I, I don't have the name of the company at hand, but they were making a wiki pad, which was going to be a tablet video game console or a, a, t- a gaming tablet, rather, that had detachable controllers on the side of it. Well, they're now filing an injunction against Nintendo saying, hey, this whole Switch idea is exactly what we were doing. So they are now suing Nintendo to actually say, you know what? You have to stop selling it and you have to give us eight hundred or $600,000 worth of damages. So I, I get this. I, I really do. Um, the... The tablet sort of worked like it's a controller in the shape of a U, and you dock like an Android tablet into it, and it sort of works. Um, yeah, it's not entirely the same, but it's sort of the same. Uh, I understand why they're suing, because Nintendo's actually making fucking bank with the Switch right now. Uh, at the same time, I don't think this is perfectly one-to-one. That said, uh, this is a it, it was an actual product. It got released. It didn't sell very well. It fucking failed. Um, it has reviews online of the thing. Um, this isn't a patent troll, right? This isn't something where someone could go, oh, well, we had the idea for a video game system that you could take on buses, so we're suing you. This is a company that has a legitimate case, and it's going to be up to a jury to say, yeah, sure or no. The only thing that would really unfairly tilt this case is that uh, Nintendo has lawyers out the fucking ass, right? Yeah. They're not the biggest company in the world, but god damn it, do they have a legal team. Uh, this other company? Not so well, much, right? Yes, but I, I'm torn because while I love the Switch and I don't want to see it go away, I'm also a little bit of an anarchist in my heart where I would love to see Nintendo lose this just to see what happens. All of a sudden, Nintendo's brand new hot system, they can't sell anymore. It's bad for video game industry, but man, that would be fun to see what would happen. <sighs> I, okay, okay. I, I'm not going to say it would be fun to see what would happen. Uh, an injunction is pretty serious business. Now, that said, to actually get uh, a judge to agree to an injunction, there has to be something pretty egregious. Um, if Nintendo comes out and they say, hey, look, um, we had designs for this thing back when we were building the Wii. Right, this company is is fucked. Right, their their case totally falls apart. Now, if they said, "Well, we came up with the idea for the Switch after we saw news of this other console that this other company was building," Nintendo, that's pretty damning well, to Nintendo. Nintendo has a timeline on when they started this, when they put the patent in for the NX, the handheld that's game true. console. That's true. But but if it comes down to it, if it comes down to court, they can start looking at. There's, there's a big period of time between initial design docs and filing for a patent, right? Totally, like, huge timelines between those two. If the design docs come after public news about this other console, or, or even if there's an email chain, because this will happen in discovery, right? Lawyers get to go through your company's email and find shit. That's why you don't do anything on your, your company's computers, because it's legally discoverable. Um, if if a lawyer pulls out an email that from some guy at Nintendo saying, hey, we saw this weird console, could we build something like this? That's really fucking damning. Really damning to their case. Yeah, I mean, that would put a nail in the coffin. It really would. Now, I don't think there would be an injunction. Nintendo, if there's even the threat of an injunction Nintendo going through... Nintendo will pay them the fuck off. Yeah, they'll say, hey, for the love of God, let's settle this. Here's, like, millions of dollars. Shut up. And, and that... It happens, right? That's that's the legal system today. That door. Yeah, oh, God. That, that, it's open. I've got it. I've got it. No, no, we're good. Anyway, so really, that's all we have for news this week. Tom wanted to jump up get the door because I have, a, door. I have a wind flow in my, fan, or in my house. That's a little weird. But anyway. Door acquired. Uh, before we get into anything like post roll, um, we do want to say that we have nice mic, Tom. Yep. Uh, post game this week. Uh, last week we did um, GTA Five Online. It was a good time. Um, there's a hell of a clip we might see about getting out there of like some weird ass cars spawning in the middle of nowhere on top of each other. It was wonderful. It was great. But this week, 
for everyone. There is no reason you can't play this. You it can, is free. You can download it in 10 minutes. It is TF2. Team Fortress 2. So we will have links to our Discord in here. You can find links to our Discord on our Twitter. Nerf heavy. Just get in our Discord, get in our lobbies, and play TF2 just, with us. Just fucking, fucking get in here. Go all heavy, or go all medic, or be that bastard spy, whatever you want to do. Just get in and play with us. Yep. But with that, I think that's all we got for you this week. So any topics you want us to talk about or news that you feel we missed that you want us to talk about, uh, tweet at us at, at 72 PC podcast. Um, if you're watching us live on Twitch, like I said, we will have some new series coming up. Once we stream them, we will be doing a little bit of post and putting them up on YouTube. So you can find them at 72 pin connector on YouTube in case you don't catch the stream or miss an episode of it. And in the event that you're actually somehow watching our podcast on YouTube or through RSS, we do go live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitch at .tv slash 72 pin connector. So with that, I think that's all we have for you guys this week. Do you have anything you want to add, it. Tom? No, no, that's it. So join us. Hit us up on Discord. Play some TF2. Uh, I suck, so have fun killing me. And hope that you don't get killed too much by D-Last. Yeah, yeah, because he kind of fucking owns this game. He's like, kind of good. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking dick. Right. Anyway, so until next week, y'all, game on. See you, everyone. Yeah, I totally said y'all there. Y'all. Y'all. Y'all fucking suck. Y'all. Yeah.